Okay, so we're going to get started. Um, as I mentioned, can you go back to that other one? As I mentioned, the capstone that I chose for this project um, dealt with the college and career readiness because we talked about, we've talked all year about <coughs> increasing vocational programs for the students here at the regional school programs, but also for the students in this region. So um, college and career readiness, the importance of effective vocational education programs, um, and this is also done in collaboration with Jerome Jails from Boone County Schools. He's been very helpful in helping this process along. Basically, I selected this process because we've noticed that students are completing their high school credits, they're graduating, but we're not seeing a lot of post-secondary success from our students here at the regional school programs. Um, we also want to make sure that these opportunities are maximized because when the program's housed off cam campus, sometimes we minimize the opportunity for those programs. Next slide. And looking through there in the introduction piece, Vocational education is an integral part of post-secondary education for, for a lot of students. We focus a lot of times so much on the college readiness piece. Sometimes we don't always put a lot of emphasis onto the, the vocational piece because it's just, it, it's a smaller cross-section, a smaller group of people that, that need that. So we want to be able to present some research that shows that students who have early access to vocational programs are more successful than those who have no access or, or access it maybe after, co after high school or at the very end of their career. Um, as I look through some of these different pieces, there, there's about five or six different articles that I, that I looked at when I did the, the review. Oops. Do you want me to do that? Sure. Um, you just have to hit the space bar. The first article was from, that, from NEA. It was a journal article about how it's a necessity for high school students. And this is one thing we've talked about as we talked through the Home Builders Association as well, that there's such a focus on college readiness that the vocational, there's been a, a large attrition. Those, those folks that have been in the vocational field are aging out. They're, they're getting older. Um, they're retiring. And they're manufacturing, manufacturing fields that have to be filled by younger workers that need specific training in those fields. Um, the next article um, was about trying to rethink how vocational education looks. One of the big things, again, people are aging out. Also, the managerial field in those um, vocational fields have aged out. So the managers are retiring, and you don't have a workforce that is familiar with that field of work that can go in and be a manager, be a supervisor, anything like that. So more opportunities are available for upper-level jobs within these vocational fields. <laughs> um, again, another one, it's just an overview of, of how vocational education has gone over time. And I'll be glad to send this PowerPoint out to anybody that wants to see it, and you can look through all the articles, but I don't think we want to go through them all this morning. Um, it also talks about how successful vocation education has had on districts, communities, and the diverse population. So one of the big things in this article was looking at how vocational education has to be tailored to the region for wherever it wherever it's being housed. So in Northern Kentucky, it would be a lot of manufacturing jobs, things like that with the different um, corporations that are coming in. Um, the next one was kind of a, it, it's on the other side of the argument that maybe vocational education is not the best, but I think when you present this information, you, you've got to be able to show both sides of it and show the argument that there are people that disagree with it um, and understand their perspective as well when you go through it. And finally, this one, this is one of my favorite ones because I think it would relate more to the kids more than us as adults. But it talks a lot about Mark Zuckerberg as a founder of Facebook and how he did not graduate from college, yet he is a multi-billionaire now because he had an idea and he was able to take it. So giving kids another avenue, another opportunity to, sh to show that there are ways to be successful outside of just the typical four-year college curriculum. So overall, the research question was, do students who have access to vocational and technical training programs during high school have a higher rate of achievement and success in terms of graduation, program completion, and job placement than those students, students who do not have access to the same programs? So overall, is early involvement in the vocational program going to be helpful to these students? Or are they going to be more successful? Um, we used 
Um, several things here. I surveyed the principals from principals and counselors from the high schools um, in this region. Um, Use a student survey here. Um, ILPs, IEP, and transition plans. Um, as much college and career data as I could get um, from the districts based on what, what's posted, and then also the graduation data. Again, looking at how it was done, it was done so we could make the correlation between the number and percentage of students that had access to programs and their success in comparing them to the peers without the same access or the same opportunities. Um, we also tried to do that so that regionally we could compare it across the region in, in terms of how our region stacked up to the state and national trends. Began collecting this data in January of this year, and any data we collected as far as IEP, transition, goals, ILP results, all of that was done in a manner that no student information was used, and I was the only one that had access to that information. Also made sure when we did our surveys that those were anonymous. We didn't have any names on them. It was done in the survey monkey um, for the districts. So what I got back, the feedback I got, was that 23% of our districts um, have an on-site or on-campus vocational program for high school students. Um, and when I say that there was 18 districts involved in this, I also included Campbell County um, because they are one of the regional districts, even though they don't necessarily participate in the co-op this year. Um, that may be a kind of an abnormality, but we do also have districts that still use their vocational program. So 29% um, of the districts have some type of agreement or some, some type of plan that they allow districts to use one of the regional or state-ran um, vocational programs. And then the biggest feedback I got from the principals and counselors, and, and I think um, what Jerome also conveyed from Boone County was most of the districts that we surveyed, cost was one of the biggest hurdles. If there was some type of program that could help offset the cost, there would be more interest in participating. Um, so looking at our specific data here for the regional school programs, we've had over the last three years, we had 100% graduation rate, which is great. On, on paper, that, that looks wonderful. Um, we're doing great things. Over the same time, we had four graduates that finished in sooner than four years. That, that's also very positive that we've got kids that can finish early. But then we started looking at it, 40% of our graduates enrolled in some type of college or vocational pr program at one point. 25% of that 40% have completed their coursework or are still enrolled. However, 90% of the graduates have not enrolled or completed. So one of the two, we've got a lot that have not completed their program if they enrolled or we have some that haven't enrolled. So as great as it is that we've got 100% graduation rate, we're still not doing enough to support them after graduation and make them successful post-secondary, which is the ultimate goal to be able to be an effective member of society. So we, we look at the results. Um, there's an ever-growing need for career technical and vocational opportunities and that different avenues for our high school students. Um, the evidence and the data shows that students who are able to participate in these programs earlier have a better chance of being successful in terms of graduation, licensure, and employment upon completion. Um, students have an interest in the career technical and vocational field, but there's just limited access to the programming for the students right now. It's, it's difficult. District recognizes the need for expanded programming, but the three big things that I've always gotten back and in talking with everybody has been funding, space, and staffing. You know, it would be great to have all of this, even if we have the money, where are we going to put it? We don't have a building for it. We can't afford to build a new building just for this. Um, how do we staff it? Because finding people that are qualified in these jobs but can also work in a school are sometimes difficult. Um, most of the schools were willing to work collaboratively if there was an opportunity to share the programming and, and offset some cost. So that's where we started coming in with the Home Builders Association. We had talked back in the fall about a possibility of this, and so we started working very closely with the Home Builders Association, and things came together very quickly. Um, so beginning next year, KCES and Boone County Schools, I believe Covington's also going to mm -hmm. jump in there now too, in collaboration with Northern Kentucky Home Builders Association and the Innswater Trade School, we're going to begin implementation of this program beginning the fall of 2016. Um, students will have the opportunity to begin participating as a 10th grader. They'll finish as a senior. That senior year, they will actually be working toward their licensure and passing the test. So as a senior, if they choose plumbing as an avenue, they will be out as an apprentice plumber, um, while their coursework will be geared toward them passing the test to be a sitting plumber. Um, the, the curriculum has been approved through KDE. It falls under the apartment maintenance 
um, curriculum, but it is approved for all seven areas of um, vocational training that in Home Builder Association has. They will complete all their core class requirements for graduation. Um, so this program will be, we're working right now, the program is going to be a three day a week program, half a day. The other part of the day, I, I believe, I know Boone County and possibly Covington, their students are actually going to be housed all day at the Home Builders Association, whereas our students will be transported back and forth. But when they're not there, they will be working on their core requirements as they need through the curriculum of KDE. Um, tuition slots will be paid, and the Home Builders Association has cut down our tuition slots to where they are not going to make a profit off of this. Tuition slots are going to cost $1,250 per year for a student, which is very cheap. Um, they're not going to make a profit off of it because they want to get this out there and increase their their awareness and increase this to the goal is to have approximately 350 students by 2020. Um, they are looking at expanding their building and expanding what they have so the more they can get involved they, they want to start off with a small group and then build to, to be able to show that so um, again it'll be monitored semesterly the first couple of years to make any tweaks that we need um, from so in December next year we'll look at it see where we are um, the Home Builders Association, the co-op, and local districts are going to work to establish more stakeholders um, that are willing to support the new program. We, we're working right now with the Economic Development Company Corporation. There was about a $19,000 shortfall that was going to occur um, in gap funding for the first two years. Um, and the Economic Development Force has agreed that for the first two years they're going to cover that $19,000 each year. Um, because they feel like this is an important program that they're bringing in a lot of manufacturing jobs and they think this will help. So we'll be able to present this data and findings <laughs> to schools um, that are not participating early to enhance the greater participation. I think that's one of the big plans for next year is to be able to, to show what we're doing. Um, and that was one of the big reasons that they were willing to let the regional school programs jump into this is that we work for so many different districts, we were, we'd be able to, to show some success. And then we'll go, you've got all your... All the sources for my articles there. But kind of in closing, the vocational education piece, I think for our students, number one, is, is most important, but also for the students across the region. So this was a good opportunity for me not only to complete a project, but do something that would realistically help students and help the region. So that's all I've got. If anybody has any questions, I'll take some questions.